think my perspective grew once I got back here. You know, when you go on a trip like this, this was the first mission trip for me. Um, so I was processing where we were going and what we were doing. Um, I never felt uncomfortable or worried about the plan. And the plan would change, sometimes daily. And I felt completely at peace with all of that. And the whole time I'm there, he was showing me just how far-reaching he is and just how things like not knowing the language, um, different surroundings, different people, poverty, just a total different culture can love him like crazy and he loved them back. What I expected and what he showed me way different. Blew my expectations out of the water. Yeah, I wouldn't give him enough credit, that's for sure. That's for sure. He's a big God. He's huge. One thing that stuck out to me and that God showed me while I was there was how much love and openness there is, uh, the church there. Uh, when you walk into church and it's all Brazilian people, you didn't feel like an outsider at all. They just made you feel right at home. They made you feel welcome. Um, you felt definitely like one of the brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and it made me think, how welcoming are we here in America when a newcomer comes into our doors? Do we welcome them with open arms or are we kind of standoffish? Um, yeah, so it just showed me how much um, the Brazilian church is just so, yeah, welcoming, opening, and very loving. God definitely made an impact, but when I was going, I was, since our cultures are different, I didn't know how the kids were gonna react when we were there. I didn't know what they wanted to do when we, get, when we got there, but I realized that they wanted to play and eat snacks and learn just like every other kid would. Um, seeing the kids' faces when we brought the soccer goals out because I knew that's exactly what they wanted to do when they got there. And just seeing how happy they were to destroy us and then bring their moms out and still destroy us. So, that's a lot of fun. I wanted to show everybody in Brazil how big God was. <laughs> and it's so funny because, wow, did he show me how awesome he is. So um, the breakdowns, the barriers, uh, the pushing outside of your boundaries and outside of your comfort zone, that was huge. Um, I felt like there was a lot of um, barriers there with the language and um, with people not feeling comfortable at first, even them and me and then it just all crumbled so quickly and it was just so, such an open love and it was just such an amazing feeling um, to see that going on. So that was the biggest thing that I learned, I feel like, um, that God showed me that, you know, every single song that I sing about him overcoming and, you know, everything like that, that's, that's so true. And um, just to be able to bring that back to here, that was pretty awesome. Uh, we had the opportunity to meet the families of the teen leaders who had raised the kids. Uh, in one case, Tiago was raised by his aunt from two years old. Uh, Camila was raised by her mom. and uh, Both of these kids are now on the way to becoming leaders in the church. Tiago is going to be a missionary. Who knows where Camila is going to end up. But in both cases, as I was introduced to the people that right on that, at that point, it brought tears to my eyes and I thought, what am I doing crying? You know. I'm, talking in Portuguese, or through a translator talking in Portuguese, and we don't hardly understand each other, but um, I had some time to reflect about it and realize that um, the reason I was so deeply moved was um, these folks, even though in these cases they were in total poverty from an outside perspective and how we view being rich from a material perspective, you know, you think, gosh, how do they keep going every day? And So since that time I had time to reflect on it, and there's a verse in Jeremiah, it's uh, 
chapter 29, verse 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And so reflecting on that, I think of times in my life where I felt like God had abandoned me or didn't love me or didn't wish good things for me. And I think that is what affected me, that even though, despite the fact they were in a situation with deep material poverty, um, they, despite that, were able to overcome that and know that God loved them and had plan good plans for them and they kept going and actually raised their children to believe that themselves and, and look what was produced out of it. We show up and Camilla is there. This 13-year-old girl walks in and has been playing the guitar and Kate has been giving her voice lessons. Um, and in this moment, this little two-year-old little girl, Thaisa, who has had nothing to do with me the entire day, is exhausted and she just kind of backs herself up to me so I'll pick her up and she falls asleep on my lap and Camilla is off to my right, sitting in a pew, playing how he loves. And she's singing in Portuguese, and we, some of us are singing in um, English. And for that moment, I closed my eyes. And I was sitting in my living room with my grandbaby asleep on my lap, with my son playing the guitar. And in that moment, I just couldn't stop the tears. I just, I wasn't ugly crying, but I just couldn't stop the tears because in that moment, God was saying, it doesn't matter where you are. I am here. I could have been sitting in my own living room and having that moment would not have impacted me at all because that was just common every day. But to be in a little yellow church in the middle of a village, in Brazil and have that same experience and know that God was in that place at that moment, that was my very favorite 